Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Today is Friday, September 10th, and I always give you a reminder on Fridays. Saturdays, I do not do the walk. That's the one day that I take to rest, but I will be back with you on Sunday, and Sunday is a longer message. So today, we're continuing on with this idea of trusting the Lord, trusting that he is telling you what you think he's telling you, that you are seeing these visions, you are seeing the dreams, the prophecy that he's giving you, trust that it's coming from the Lord. So today, we're going to be in Psalm 118. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the fact that your love does endure forever, that you always have us in, our, in your hand, that you are always responding to our prayers, even when we don't see that response right away. Lord, we know that you are still on your throne, that you are still ruling the universe, and that all of this is not a surprise to you that the things going in our world don't shake you because you knew it was coming and you've already made a plan for it. Lord, we love you and you are the source of our strength as we engage in these spiritual battles. In Jesus' name, amen. So in Psalm 118, it's, um, I, I have the whole thing copied. I don't know if we're going to have time to do the whole thing, but... Um, it says a lot of things in here, and there's a lot of things in here that are very repetitive. Now, when the Bible repeats things over and over again, it's because the Holy Spirit is really trying to stress that on your heart. So when you hear those things over and over again, don't glaze over them. Really ponder what it means. So this is what it says. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let uh, the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. So right there, we've got four times that, that his steadfast love endures forever is repeated. So anytime you see the number four, that means seasons. When you have the four together, it's an entire year. This is something that lasts. It doesn't go away. It's year round, 365 days a year, whether you're feeling it or not. That his love is steadfast. It does not go away. It's the same every single day. And it's not something that we can completely understand with the human brain. His love for us is so pure and so deep that we will never fully understand that until we get to go to heaven. And that, it, that love endures. It does not stop because of circumstances. It does not stop because the world is dealing with COVID. It does not stop because of all these things that are happening around us. It has not stopped. That steady supply is continuing to flow. How long will it flow? Forever, forever. Keep in mind that the very creation of time itself came from the Lord. He is eternal. He is outside of that time. So when he says it's going to be, be there forever, it is really there forever. It is never going to not exist. Verse five, out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. When we are feeling distressed and we are feeling discouraged, our first go-to should be to call to the Lord because he's going to answer you and he is going to set you free in his way. It doesn't mean that you're gonna see an answer immediately. This is not a drive-through window. It's gonna be his way, his time, and it's going to help build your relationship with Christ the way he does it. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? We have to remember that the Lord has our back. He's got our front. He's got our sides. He's got us completely surrounded in his holiness. We're covered in that righteousness of Jesus Christ. So what can man do to you? The only fear that belongs inside of you is that fear of the Lord, that reverential fear where you approach him with respect. Verse seven, the Lord is on my side as my helper. I look I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. So you have people around you that hate you. They scorn you. They scoff at you. I got a private message yesterday with the F-bomb in it sent straight to the walk. I mean, those things are just going to constantly be coming at you. However, 
You have to remember that the Lord is your helper. And because of that, you can look at this person with triumph and know, you know what? The Lord has already conquered the way you are dealing with this and the way you are treating me. And then we can pray for them because who knows? Maybe that person will eventually enter into a relationship with Christ. Verse eight, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. What does refuge mean? Refuge is that safe place, that place that you go to get that quiet peace. And for a lot of people, their physical place that they go for refuge is their prayer closet because that's that place where they can be alone with the Lord and uninterrupted. Verse nine, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So not only are we gonna trust and not trust in the common man, we're not gonna trust in people who are in charge, who are running the government. Why? Because the Lord is above that person. We take our refuge in the Lord. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. When we go to spiritual battle in the name of the Lord, nothing can stop us. And we have to keep that in mind that we, this battle is already won when we go to the Lord. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among the thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. How do we cut off the, these battles and these people that are scorning and scoffing at us and they're being hateful towards Christians? How do we cut them off? We call on the name of the Lord. That's repeated three times. That's a spiritual strategy for spiritual battles. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. So your strength and your praise, it all comes straight from the Lord. And because of that, he is your salvation because you're calling on his name. He is how you will be rescued. Glad songs of salvations are, salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. So the right hand of the Lord fights valiantly. Valiant, valiance is um, another word for bravery. So our bravery comes from the Lord. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Keep in mind, we talked the other day about how the Lord disciplines those who are his children because he wants us to grow and he wants us to grow in a way that's healthy. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. How do we enter through that gate? We call on the name of Jesus Christ. We say, yes, Lord, we believe that you died on that cross. We believe that you rose from the dead and we are putting our faith and trust in you and letting you be Lord of our lives. All that we have, all that we are, we give to you, Lord. Verse 21, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad on it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. So when we call on that name of the Lord, we are blessed and we're from that house of the Lord. The Lord is our God and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. We have to remember who is our God. It's not what we're seeing on that news. It's not, our, it's not the United States. The United States is not something that we put our faith and trust in. It should be that the United States has put her faith and trust in the Lord. We've got to keep it in perspective. We still belong to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe. And then verse 29, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. As you go into your prayer closet today, 
bask in that steadfast love that endures forever. Really ponder what does that mean that his steadfast love endures forever. And then think about your place within the universe, not just the United States, but within our entire universe as his child. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.